Hare Krishna, good morning dear devotees from Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. These are our adventures in Srimad Bhagavatam. And so we're continuing our series we're calling Meeting in Kurukshetra. And this is session number 84. And it's the 38th session of the Brahma Radit. So we'll go ahead and say a few prayers before we begin. And I want to encourage anybody watching it that uh, please uh, make some comments, reflection. Like it's nice to have some feedback. Narayanam namaskritam naram shchayvanarotamam devim sadasutim vyasam tato jayamudirayat vedi ramayane shchayva purani padate tata adavante cha madhye cha hari sarvatragiyate mukam karoti vachalam bhangum langayate girim yet kripa tamaham vande shri gurum dinataranam paramananda madhavam paramananda he madhava Padunga luci makaranda, se makaranda panakoti, anande bolo hari hari, harinka name vanda vela, parikori be chakadola, se chakadolanka paraye, manamo rahu nirantare. Manamo nirantare rahu Ha Krishna Boli jiva jau Ha Krishna Boli jau jiva Mote u dada rada dava Mote u dada rada dava Mote u dada rada dava Dharma projida kaita vota padamoni matsuranam satam vidyam vastava matta vastu shivadam tapa triumulanam mulanam shimad bhagavate mahamune kate kim vapara yishvara sadyo hidya varudyate chukati bishu shu shu bistakshanat nigamakopa tarogaditam falam shukamukada mitra dravasam yutam Pivata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Mohuraho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka Analto Pasamam Sakshad Bhakti Yoga Madhoksaje Loka Shajana Tovid Vams Chakra Satvata Samhitam Yasham Vaishuyamanayam Krishna Padama Purushe Bhakti Rudpadyate Pumsa Shoka Moha Bayapaha Shimad Bhagavatam Paranamamalam Yad Vaishnavana Priyam Yasmin Paramaham Sameka Mamalam Gyanam Pradam Giyate Tatra Gyana Vairagya Bhakti Sahitam Naiskamyam Aviskritam Tach Trinvam Supaten Vicharana Pado Bhakti Avumuchan Naraha Arto Yam Brahma Sutranam Bharatarta Vinunaya Gayatri Vashirupo So Vedarta Paribrimitaha Sairava Vedeti Hasanam Sadam Sadam Samudritam Sairava Vedanta Sadam He Srimad Bhagavatam Ishyate Tadrasamrita Triptasya Nanyatra Svedrachi Krachit Krishna Bhakti Rasa Svarup Shri Bhagavata Tate Veda Shastra Hoyte Parama Mahatva Chari Veda Upanishade Jata Kichu Hoya Tara Arta Lena Vyasa Korila Sanchaya Jai Sutre Jai Ruk Vishaya Vachana Bhagavate Sehiruk Shloke Nibandana Jivera Nishtada Lagi Sutra Koilo Vyasa Mayavadi Vashya Shunile Hoya Sarvanasha Jaho Bhagavata 
Shanta Pada Vaishnavera Stane Ekanta Shaykoro Chaitanya Charane Bhagavata Jena Mane Sejavana Sama Tara Sasta Achejanme Janme Prabhu Jama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna Good morning dear devotees My voice is a little bit gone today So uh, reading from Srimad Bhagavatam from 10th Canto chapter 47 uh, We'll be reading from text number 30 today Gora Graganya Gana Go Trigoloduharam Goranga Guda Tamago Piada Kolpa Briksham Gopala Gada Rati Dan Yati Singha Gora Govinda Deshi Kavadam Satutam Namami Artaika Sadanam Krishnam Artan Brajajanam Chitan Tam Chitashvasakam Bhaktam Archivande Durasaya Artaika Sadanam Krishnam In sorrow with a hopeless heart I offer respects to Krishna who is Artan Brajajanam Chitan The only shelter for people who are suffering uh, the only shelter for the uh, suffering people of Braj, Cham Chatasvasakam Bhakta Marchivande Durasaya the Uddhava, who alleviated their suffering. So we'll go ahead and read our text for today. Text number 31. Atma Gyana Maya Shudho Vyati Rikto Gunan Vayaha Susupti swapna jagdrad beer, maya britti beer iyate. Being composed of pure consciousness or knowledge, the soul is distinct from everything material and is uninvolved in the entanglements of the modes of nature. We can perceive the soul through the three functions of material nature, known as wakefulness, sleep, and deep sleep. <laughs> So, as we were uh, speaking from Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's commentary previously, in the uh, previously, Krishna had told Uddhava, Shriyatam Priya Sunday show, that you speak this topic to the gopis, but he used a word which is plural. Not just that you speak it to them, but you speak it to them again and again. And Jiva Goswami in Gopal Champu, he says, Nedam Isvarata Gyanam Kind Isvarad Atmanaha Shaktir Bra Vyasvajita. That uh, the gopis, they heard this topic again and again and again. And each time that they would hear it, they would understand something a little further. Artha Tritya Varatas Tutad Eva Nishtitam. The first time they heard it, they thought, what is Krishna saying? He's preaching again to the to the gopis. Huh? I, I devotees we like Bhagavad Gita. We read Bhagavad Gita, but I don't know so many devotees who relish Bhagavad Gita in the same way that we relish the tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, or who uh, really relish reading a lot from about the universal form or <laughs> the topics of, of uh, Sankhya Yoga. But here in this verse, it's exactly what Krishna is speaking to the gopis. That atma gyan maya sudo, huh? that you should understand the atma, the soul, which is gyana maya sudo. Krishna is speaking to the gopis, gopis this gyan, 
this this subject matter of knowledge and, and uh, like that. And you should understand, Krishna says, uh, that the, the jiva is pure and it's vetirikta. It's completely separate from aguna anvaya, from the modes of material nature. It's not uh, connected with those things. And susupti svapna jagrad beer. And susupti in deep sleep, in swapna, ordinary sleep, jagrabi, in waking consciousness, huh? we perceive the soul through these three ways. So, as we've been speaking in the last sessions from Vishwanath and, and uh, different commentaries, Krishna is speaking uh, simultaneously different things to different persons. Understanding that some people have some attachment to Gyan, hear Krishna speaking Gyan, and people hear this who have attachment that they think, "Wow, this is this is the best." <laughs> Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur describes here that uh, that Krishna is saying that the soul, which is composed of pure knowledge and pure consciousness, it's ontologically distinct from the material nature. Uh -huh. And Vishwana says that the gopis are asking that, okay, but then how is it that people don't understand you, your true ident your true original nature? And Krishna replies that I can be perceived everywhere as a paramatma, as a super soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that super soul possesses this transcendental knowledge. And he says that although I'm the creator, they do my achincha shakti, my inconceivable pot, potency, I am always pure. And I'm never directly in touch with the material modes of nature. So the first meaning of this verse is that the jivatma is separate from material nature. And the gopis hear that, and what is he saying? And they, they, then they hear the verse again. Oh, you're talking about the Paramatma? Krishna says, yes, yes, that's me. <laughs> and this Paramatma is Vyati Rikta. It's completely separate from material nature. And although I'm the controller, Daivi Yeshu Gunamayi, although I'm the controller of material nature, I'm not involved with, with the modes of material nature. And the super soul, so supti swapna jagrabi maya bhiti iyate, iyate can be understood or seen through these three states of consciousness, so supti, swapna, and jagrabi. It can be understood in that way. So understanding this first meaning is relevant to us and it's relevant to persons who have faith, especially in this gyan. In many places in the Bhagavatam, these three states of consciousness are described. In the 11th canto, chapter 25, Krishna tells Uddhava, ironically, a similar thing that, that uh, Uddhava is speaking here, Krishna's message to the gopis. Krishna tells, tells him, Satvaj jagaranam vidyad rajasa swapnam adiset prasvapam tamasa jantos turiyam trisu santatam that you should understand that sattva jagaranam, that when you, you, this waking consciousness, which is being spoken of by Krishna, Uddhava is repeating Krishna's message to the gopis here. This is, this wakefulness, this comes from the mode of goodness. Vidya, you should understand that. And rajasa svapnam adishat, that sleep when you're dreaming, that's in the mode of passion. Mm -hmm. And prasvatam, or deep sleep, prasvatam, tamasa jantos. You should understand that that deep sleep, that's coming from the mode of ignorance. So there's a, these three states of consciousness. We may be sleeping very, very deeply, and in a deep sleep you don't dream. And that deep sleep is in the mode of ignorance. And uh, there's another type of sleep we do where we're dreaming, dreaming that's in the mode of passion and then there's wakefulness which is 
indicated by the mode of goodness. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in Sartre Darshan, he says, Kasmat Gunat Kavas Ityata Aha Sattvat Iti. So this verse describes what state of being did the gunas produce. And it's, it describes that this state beyond the modes of material nature is being described. There's a fourth state which extends beyond the other three states in the form of one Atma. Isn't it really fascinating and exciting subject matter? <laughs> Why Krishna is speaking like this to the gopis? It sounds like the Bhakti program 101 or something. Again, in the eleventh canto of the Bhagavatam, Satchva Jagaranam Vidyad Rajasasrapnamadi Set Presvatam Tamasa Jantos Turiyam Trisu Santatam. The same point is made that these three states of consciousness come from the three modes of nature. But Krishna, he says, Yahi Samsmiti Bhandalyam Atmanoguna Britti Da Mai Turiyestito Jaya Chagas Tadguna Chaitasam. I'm situated beyond those three things. And this is confirmed in the Gopal Tapani Upanishad. Yoso jagrat swapna susuptam atitya turiyatita gopalaha. That Krishna, he's transcendental, not he's transcendental to this wakefulness, to the dreaming state, and to the deep state. This is Gopal Krishna. So in this world, we perceive everything like a dream. There's a beautiful poem, Edgar Allan Poe, you may know. I'll just read a, a stanza or two from a very nice poem uh, that Edgar Allan Poe wrote in uh, 1849 called A Dream Within a Dream. And that's our life today. Huh? Or sometimes we say that, that, that uh, Facebook is an illusion within a delusion. Huh? Or delusion within an illusion. This whole material world is an illusion. And in Facebook, you have this delusion that you're having this connection with people, but actually they don't see you. You're just looking at a computer screen. Anyway, Edgar Allan Poe, he describes, I stand amid the roar of a surf-tormented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep while I weep, while I weep. Oh God, can I not grasp the, them with a tighter clasp? Oh God, can I not save one from the pitiless wave? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? So this is the nature of consciousness in this material world, and this is one meaning of what Krishna is speaking here to the gopis, just like in, in uh, Psalms, in the book of David. The Bible says, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? So we have this consciousness that there's something separate from the Lord. But there's nothing separate. Everything Krishna has perceived everywhere. And therefore, Krishna is speaking this to the gopis here. And Jiva Goswami in his Lagu of Toshini, he says that, that there are three meanings to this verse. He says the first is that the, the Atma is endowed with knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, the gopis, Krishna's telling us to the gopis, and the gopis, they said that we understood this, that you had this dark form. We saw you, Sham Sundar, Vrindavan Bihari Krishna, with your darkest complexion. Mm -hmm. And that darkest complexion is, is chamatkar. It's very, very astonishing. But now you're telling us that you have this achincha shakti. It spreads everywhere. And this is the upadan, the material cause. You're there as a paramatma, the antaryami, the super soul. And because of this, we're not actually separated from you. But this form can't be seen by anybody. And therefore, people say you don't have a form. Huh? And the fact that you have a form can only be understood by you. So what's the use of teaching that to us? Hmm? We only see the self as a limited body. Uh -huh. And, 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 and we, we perceive ourselves as being material bodies. So how can we associate with you then uh, if you're a pure spirit? <laughs> so the, the gopis, they protest against us. 
A second meaning then comes when Krishna tells the gopis that that form of mind that you see is realized by you in these three states of consciousness. Jagrat, Swapna, Susupteshu, Yogatasha, Chayoginaha, Yakachan, Manaso, Britti, Sabhava, Yuchatasraya. It's a verse from the Garuda Purana, speaking about the, the consciousness of the yogi. And the yogi, where there's Jagrat, Swapna, Susupteshu, whether it's waking, sleep, or deep sleep, the yogi is completely absorbed in the Lord. So this is a sec- the second meaning of this verse. The gopis hear it again. Oh, he's speaking to us that we should do yoga and we should meditate on him. And just like the yogis, they see the Lord, whether they're awake, whether they're dreaming or they're in deep sleep. And a third meaning then is there. And this is described in the Gautamiya Tantra. And Krishna's telling him basically that the form that you realize when you're waking, dreaming and sleeping, that form is taking shelter in your minds. Navina niradashyamam nilindara varokanam lochanam valavi nandanam vande krishna gopala rupinam. I offer my pranams vande krishna gopala rupina to that form of Krishna who's gopal, who has blue lotus eyes. Navina niradashyamam, and he has a complexion of a dark cloud. So, in this way, uh, Krishna's telling the gopis, he's speaking to them a multitude of things, and he's cheating certain people to keep them outside the door. So some people want to understand it in this way, then that's all they'll be able to perceive. And this is a very uh, beautiful way to speak. In the, uh, the Bhagavatam, uh, this is described as Parokshavad. Parokshavadam Rishaya Paroksha Mama Chapriyam. Krishna says in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam. That this Parokshavad is very dear to the Rishis and is very, very dear to me. Hmm? Paroksha means you say one thing, but you mean another thing, just like a, a husband and wife. Huh? It, it, it's your 25th wedding anniversary, and the wife, she's cooking for two days to, have, to, to please her husband and have a wonderful program. But just the two of them in a very romantic time. And the day of the anniversary, the husband comes in and he says, Hey, sweetheart, you know, some of the boys are going swimming today. And do you mind if I go with them? And your wife says, Fine, go right ahead. So the man hears, she says, Fine, go right ahead. But is that what she means? What she really is saying is that you're a jerk. Mm-hmm. And if you go, then when you come back, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to go to my father's house. That's a real. But with one word, she's saying, fine, go right ahead. But there's another deeper meaning. That's parokshavad. Mm-hmm. So Krishna's saying many lo- multiple levels of things to the gopis here. Mm-hmm. Another meaning is that Krishna's saying that although I'm residing in Mathura, and okay, I can't cheat you, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm trying to tell you that we're always together, but I know, I know, it's all right. I'm in Mathura. I'm not going to argue with you, Krishna says. And he says the word atma here means that I... Although I'm full of knowledge, Ganamaya, that means I'm always conscious of you and I never forget you. And even though I'm present here in Matura, you should understand that I don't have any fault, Sudha, of associating with the women in Matura <laughs> because I'm Vyati Rikta. I always remain aloof, although I'm living in Matura and there's so many beautiful women there. I'm, I don't have this fault. I'm Vyati Rikta. I'm I'm always detached from them. This is another meaning of what Krishna's telling the gopis because he knows what the gopis are seeing, thinking. And Krishna's saying this is because I, I have so much pain because of your separation. So how can I get some pleasure from some other women? Huh? I'm always constantly meditating on your qualities, guna anvaya, <laughs> meaning in the verse. I'm meditating on your qualities, like your beauty and your sweet sidelong glances. And similarly, uh, susupti swapna jagrabi, uh, you can always perceive me with your mental faculties in these three states of consciousness of sleeping, dreaming, and waking. While you're in deep sleep, you can perceive my general form and qualities as a paramatma. 
And in the dreams, you can perceive my my particular fun qualities. And in waking, you can perceive directly the full manifestation, my laughing, dancing, and other things. Sambhog Madhurjam, this very sweet kind of union. So, uh, Jiva Goswami, in Raghu Vaishnav Toshini, we commented some of this in some of our previous sessions. He says that in Gokul, there are three types of prem, which he defines as Utkanta Pradhana, Vishramba Pradhan, and Viveka Shunya. Utkanta Pradhan means that prema, which has uh, the quality uh, of uh, longing, they're wanting to be with Krishna. Vishramba Pradhan, Vishramba means to be very familiar, and this is the, the, the quality of the prema that Krishna's friends have. The Utkanta Pradhan, that prema is only possessed by Krishna's parents and by the gopis of Braj. They're always hankering for Krishna. But the Vishramba Pradhan, that's possessed by Krishna's friends. And then there's Viveka Sunya, that Vivek means to distinguish something, and Sunya means without. That, that's prema without discrimination. Huh? And then the cows have that. Huh? And that prema, uh, when it becomes very, very intense, it produces a direct appearance of Krishna. And the friends and the cows, the, the devotees and friends of Krishna who have this Vishrama Pradhan, and the cows and the trees who have this Viveka Sunya, huh? they think that Krishna is actually present when he shows his spurti. And they think that that spurti, the spurti means when, when, some, when Krishna just appears for a brief moment. And they think that that spurti is Krishna's direct form. They can't distinguish between the two. Right? But those persons who have the Utkanta Pradhan, Krishna's parents and the gopis, uh, they don't trust that. <laughs> when Krishna just appears for a moment, they think, oh, it was a dream. I, I'm just, I'm going mad. Uh, it's not real. Hmm? And uh, this is the nature of the Braj Gopis and Mother Yashoda. And we see this very beautifully. And this is something we also spoke about in some previous chapters, previous sessions. When we looked in Gopal Champu of Jiva Goswami in chapter 6, when Krishna uh, had this great dilemma. He had, he had gone to uh, Mathura with, uh, in the chariot, of Akura, and Nanda Maharaj and the boys, they followed along behind. And so Krishna stayed there for some time, and he killed Kuvalayapida, the great elephant, and he killed Chanura and Mushtika, and he killed uh, Kangsa, and then Krishna personally performed the, the uh, funeral ceremony for Kangsa to satisfy the wives of Kangsa. And then he was getting ready to leave, to return to Vrindavan, because he promised the gopis, he told them, Ayasya, I'm going to return soon. And then at that time, the residents of Mathura became very disturbed. And they called for Krishna. They had a big assembly. And they said that, uh, uh, we know you're friends with the bridge bossies, but actually you're the son of Vasudev and Devaki. And therefore you're a member of the Yadu dynasty. And you're a resident of Mathura. And you have to stay here. And Krishna then he became a little confused because he Krishna is very obedient. Krishna doesn't argue with persons even if they're wrong, especially if they're senior persons. Mm-hmm. Uh, Krishna is such a gentle soul. It's described by Srila Rupa Goswami that uh, uh, Krishna has this quality. I'm trying to remember the Sanskrit. Krishna has this quality that he always speaks in a very sweet way. Mm-hmm. And Rupa Goswami in his uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he gives an example of Krishna's sweet quality, sweet speech. He says that uh, when Krishna had to, uh, remember the Sanskrit for that? Krishna had to uh, chastise Kaliya and send him away because it was a big problem having Kaliya around. Krishna apologized to him. Priyamvada. Huh? Uh, what is it? Jani Krita Paradho Pi Sanfavadi Priyamvada. The Priyamvada, this is Krishna's quality, Priyamvada, he speaks in a very sweet way that 
even if he has to chastise someone, he speaks in a sweet way, like Kaliya. And Krishna told him, look, I'm really sorry. It's nothing personal, but you got to go because I'm a cowherd boy and we take care of the cows and you're just not compatible with the cows. And you're causing this big problem. So it's nothing personal, but please, you have to leave. Krishna spoke in a sweet way, even to Kaliya. And that's the nature also of the Vaishnavas. They speak in this priyambada. They speak in a very sweet way. It's the nature of a cultured person. So when Krishna was requested by the residents of Mathura that you have to stay, he became confused because he wanted to be respectful to them. He wanted to be respectful, especially to Vasudeva and Devaki. But at the same time, he's thinking about his mother and, and, and Nanda Maharaj and the cowherd boys and the gopis. And what am I going to do? Huh? And so he spoke with, with them and he told them at first, he said, look, I killed Kong, so what more do you guys want? <laughs> and they said, Sishupal is there huh? because uh, Sishupal, his two daughters, uh, was it? Uh, mm -hmm. Sishupal's two daughters, they married Kongsa, and now they're widows, and Sishupal's very, very upset. Asti and Prapti, the two wives of Sishupal, two uh, daughters of Sishupal, two wives of Kongsa. Now they're very upset. Asti and Prapti. Jarasandha, yeah. So uh, Jarasandha, he's going to come and he's going to attack. And, and, and if you're not here, what's going to happen? And there's so many demoniac kings. Kongsa, though he was a big budmas, a great rascal, still he had some value. At least he, he protected us from all the different kings and things. But if, you, if you're not here and he's not here, what's going to happen? And Krishna became a little confused. And he went to Nanda Maharaj, he and Balaram. Bapa, what should we do? Bapa, he, Krishna said, they say, that, they say that I'm not really your son, that I'm the son of Vasudev. And Nanda Maharaj, he began to cry. And he said, do you believe that? And Krishna said, no, yeah, you're my father. So Krishna, then he considered for some time and he thought that if I return to Vrindavan, then not only will those demoniac kings attack Mantra, but they'll also come to Vrindavan because they'll want to kill me. And it'll spoil everything in Vrindavan. Mantra is a place of warfare and soldiers, and whatever, but Vrindavan is not a place of soldiers in that. Huh? Although sometimes it said, Gopi Vyuha Sapashita, that the Gopis are watching Krishna like an army. <laughs> Gopi Vyuhasha, Vyuha means like a formation of army. Mm -hmm. So Krishna thought to himself that, that I, I have to stay here. And Nanda Maharaj understood Krishna's words and he said, You're, it's true. But then Nanda Maharaj, he became quiet and then he started beating himself on the forehead and crying. And he said, but what will happen to your mother? How will I... I Make your mother understand. And then Krishna told his father, he said, don't worry, I'll write her a letter. And Krishna wrote that letter and he gave it not just to anyone, but he gave it to Sridham, the older brother, Srimati Radharani. And Sridham, he took that letter, Krishna's letter to Mother Yashoda. And what was that letter? Adenikshidabhaktinganadadivilatilotikatashyapashyat. That on the first day, the letter said, there was kira, there was milk with rice in it. Hmm? And then on the second day, roti katashya there was some roti with some ghee. That paschat dugda pupam. Then the next day, there was some sweet soaked in sweet milk. And then on other days, there are other various foods. And Krishna says, Matamayam Nikaya Mahati Rasayate Paryaveshitvaya Yan, that uh, mother, you give me these foods in the big room and you serve me. Don't think that it's that's a dream, a swapna. Don't think that it's just some spurti that I just appeared there. You should understand. Smaratyam kim tu satyam. This is such a, it's actually, I'm actually coming there. And the proof is, I know what you are cooking for me. 
Mm -hmm. On the first day, you made this rice with milk. The second day, you made rotis with ghee. And then you made sweets and, su and sweet milk. You give me so many different things. I know where you're serving me. I know how you're serving me. Mm -hmm. And Krishna says, Yavan asnasi matas tvam iti nisamye hanta nasnami tavat. If you don't eat, I'm also not going to eat. Mm -hmm. And if I don't eat, my heart's going to dry up. Krishna doesn't eat just food, but Krishna eats love. He's Baba Grahi Janardhan. Huh? And Krishna, in his letter, he says, I'm going to come. I'm going to see you. I just have to kill my enemies, Rupa Ganam, all those different enemies. It won't be very long. I'm very eager to, to kill my enemies and show them my strength, my power. Huh? And Mother Yasoda, she has, this, this is Krishna's telling the gopis through Uddhava in his message today about these three states of consciousness. And it has different meanings. On one level, he's speaking about yoga and jnana, <laughs> and that you should be like yogis and you should be meditating on me always. But on another level, it has a deeper meaning. And Jiva Goswami brings this out in Gopal Champu that uh, Mother Yasoda, she thinks it's a dream that Krishna's coming and eating those foods. Sachi Mata, she thinks it's a dream. She's cooking for Krishna, for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the food's disappearing. And she thinks, I'm going crazy in my old age. My son's gone. I've become mad. I'm cooking for him, and it just disappears. I, I'm not actually cooking. It must just be some dream that I'm having. But it's not a dream. This is Krishna's message to the gopis. I'm actually personally present there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, when Krishna tells us to his father that we'll write this letter to Mother Yashoda, the Nanda Maharaj, he says, well, what about your friends? They depend on your love to maintain your lives. Nanda Maharaj has such a heart, he doesn't speak about himself. The first thing he speaks about is what will happen to your mother. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Krishna gives some answer, he gives this letter. And then Nandamara says, and what about your friends? And then what about the cows? He's not thinking about himself. It's the nature of a Vaishnava, Paradukha Dukhi Kipam Bodhi. The nature of a Vaishnava is they're always thinking of the welfare of others. They're not selfish. Whereas most people, even when they're practicing some spirituality, they're thinking, yeah, I've got really good sadhana. It's my sadhana. And I'm doing this, and I'm going to get so much benefit. I'm going to become a rustic person, or I'm going to get liberation, or I'm going to get this thing or that thing. And they're doing that, that for themselves. But the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they teach us that Tate Krishna Bhaji Kodi Guru Sevan, that, that our bhajan should be for the pleasure of Gurudev. It should be for the pleasure of Garanga Mahaprabhu, just like here in Jagannath Puri, where Alita. And Vishaka have come as Sriptamada Goswami and Roy Ramananda, and they're doing bhajan in the Gambira, but the bhajan is not for their pleasure. The bhajan they're doing is for the pleasure of Garanga Mahaprabhu, who's in the mood of Radharani. So Nanda Baba, he asks Krishna then, what about your friends? How are they going to stay alive? And then Krishna tells him that, that like mother, they'll attain me by seeing me because my spurti will appear there. But when my spurti appears there, because uh, my mother, <clears throat> she has this utkanta pradhan. She has this very, very intense prema, which, which is uh, predominated with this intense longing. She won't believe it. When, when, I, when I come there personally, I spurti, she won't think it's real. But the cowherd boys, they had this Vishrambra Padan. They have this prema with some familiarity, and they believe it's true that all Krishnas actually come. And then Nanda Maharaj said, well, then what about the cows? How, how will the cows hear you? Because if the cows can't hear the sound of your flute, if they can't hear the sound of you calling for them. Hey, Nandi Muki, hey, Avala, Avala. Krishna calls for all the different cows. And Krishna says that although they'll see my spurti, uh, that I'll relieve the cows of their suffering in a different way. Uh, the cows, they see by form. And Stoka Krishna, he should wrap himself up in my cloth. That cloth has my fragrance, and he should play the flute. 
And Balaram similarly should play the horn. And and those cows are so simple. When they hear that sound and they see that color of the cloth, they'll think, oh, Krishna's here. Krishna's here. And then Nanda Maharaj says, what about your servants? And Krishna then with tears in his eyes, he says that because they also have so much affection for me, like my friends, my father, then by doing service, to the elders, they'll feel my presence. And then he tells Madhu Mango privately, Krishna says to him that, that you go and you be my representative. And what does it mean? Because Madhu Mango is a Priyanarma Sukha. He has some intimate connection. He goes and sometimes speaks to the gopis on behalf of Krishna. Sometimes he's there when, when Krishna's with Radharani and the gopis. And then Krishna get, sent some gifts to them. And Krishna gave a letter to Madhu Mangal for the gopis. He gave several letters. And Krishna, what did he write to those gopis? We gave several sessions about these letters, beautiful exchange. He said, Puriyam Asyam Yadasmai Prakatyam Apihi Tam Hanta Kuriyam Katam Tat. He says, Okay, I understand. I'm in Matura. I'm not going to try to argue because if he tries to say, I'm really there with you, the gopis will say, that's nonsense. Mm-hmm. It's like we sometimes say that, that people, if they say anyway, I can't associate with the devotees, but at least I can go on Facebook or something. So I, my reply is you try to tell the Braj gopis that don't feel the separation from Krishna because Krishna's on Facebook. It's okay. You can, will the gopis be satisfied? No. And so Krishna in that same mood, he's saying, I, I accept, it's true, it's true, I'm in Matur, but my form here, Kim, but Kim to Chaya Sedrik Sputam. The form that I have here is like a shadow. Was a real form of myself, it's there in Braj. Huh? Because your absorption. Huh? And I'm experiencing because of your absorption in me, I'm, I'm there with you, and I have the shadow form. In Matur, but really I'm there with you in Braj. And then Krishna wrote a letter to Srimati Radharani's cousin sister, Chandravali. So Mabe Darsha Rattavapini Jaruchi B Purnima Brantitastwam. She said that my dear Chandravali, uh, uh, that you saw the dark moon night. Uh, you mistook that because of the full moon, because of your own infulgence. And mud vishlesha jvarati, you fainted and you felt this fever, this vishlesha jvarati, this fever of separation, and you had pain in all, all over your body. At that time, tarhi tvam anga kanti I came and I embraced you. And at that time, you were astonished because Chandravali means that lady who has a body which is as brilliant as many, many different moons, but your golden body then became like the color of a, of a blue sapphire. And you were very, very confused. What's going on? Krishna's not here, but, but I'm feeling Krishna's association. So this is Krishna's letter to Chandravali. So don't think that was just some, some drug-induced state or something, that you had some kind of vision or something. Huh? But it was real. Your bodily complexion changed. Huh? And he says, hey, Chandravali, uh-huh. you on that first lunar day, Soma Be Manam Aicham Pratipadi, uh, you wanted to show some pride. I know. I was there. Lalita Imam, Ayashivanande. And Lalita, you ran to the edge of the forest to meet me. I know. I was there. Pali, Pali Asir Vasa Sajja, Pali Chada Sipura. You got ready to greet me. And hey, Vishaki, huh? Radhe Imam Vishaki, you introduced me to Radha. Huh? And you thought, all of you thought it was just a kind of madness. Now, Krishna is saying, I'm speaking this, you should understand. Don't think that it's a dream. Don't torture your minds. Don't torture me, whom, whom sitting here in Matur. Then Krishna sent letters to Padma Bhadra and Saibya. Padme Badre Sasaivi Titiyam Apibhava Rupam Udbranta Chittam. Krishna said, when you're three forms, Tritayam, 
when your three forms with distressed hearts you started rolling on the ground mud that tamalum next to that tamal tree when you saw that tamal tree that black tamal tree you remembered me krishna said tatraham arasam i was there uh -huh. And at that time, Alingam Yushmat Anganya, I came and I embraced you. And you could feel my embrace. But again, you thought it was just this unmadana or this divine madness. And as I came and embraced you, at that time, that, that uh, Kruda Brida, that old angry lady came from somewhere. And then I couldn't be with you, yet they do come. And because of that, I'm very, very unhappy. <laughs> and then Krishna wrote a letter to Shimati Radharani. Anye ju shila radhe, mama pura gamana spurati sanjata murtim. Radha, when I revealed that I was going to Mathura, at that time you fainted. And then I embraced you, I kissed you, and I took you to the forest near the mountain. How can you forget that? Tamalinganam, huh? I, I embraced you at that time. Girivanam, I took you by Giri Govardhan. And then all those women came. Huh? And we had to leave. He said, Don't you remember that? Smarasha Eva touched Chet. And then Krishna told Radha, Swapne Yadvari Ketwam, Mamashayanam, Ihap Yashrita Raja Puriyam. Huh? He said, hey, Radhe, I know you think it's a dream. You think that, that you're having a dream, that you're sleeping in my bed in Mathura. But hey, Radhe, Svapnas tan nasti nunam. It's not a dream. Because that sheet, it has your fragrance, the fragrance of your body there. And Krishna, in this way, he told the gopis previously that don't think that these dreams are false. This is reality. I'm actually with you. So this verse that we're reading today, it has a multitude of meanings. The Bhagavatam, as we, uh, my Guru Maharaj used to quote, that prati shloki prati action and at the koi, each and every verse of the Bhagavatam has unlimited meaning. And what to speak of Krishna's message to the gopis? We'll find within this message some philosophy being given for the yogis and for the jnanis that atma jnana maya sudho, that the atma is. This, the nature of the Atma is Ganamaya, it's full of knowledge. And it's Sudha, it's pure. It's Vyati Rikta Gunadaya. It's separate, Vyati Rikta, from the, the modes of material nature. And Susupti Swapna Jagradi Bi, Maya Briti Bi Iyate. That the soul is perceived in, in these three different states of consciousness Susupti Swapna and Jagradi. Uh, through uh, deep sleep, ordinary sleep, and waking consciousness. But the same verse, Krishna is saying different things to the gopis. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur is explaining that uh, Krishna is telling the gopis that actually I, I'm here, Atma. Huh? I'm, uh, I'm full of knowledge, Ganamaya. And it means that I'm always conscious of you. And I never forget you. Even though I'm present here in Mathura, there's no fault on my part. Because because I'm Vyati Rikta. I'm completely separate from the ladies of Mathura. I'm feeling so much pain in your separation. Mm -hmm. And Guna Anvaya mm -hmm. means that I'm, I'm always meditating on the qualities of the gopis. So this is a very important subject for us to study. This again, as we've commented again and again and again, this 47th chapter, the 10th canto, this Brahma Radit, is described by some Vaishnavas as the most important chapter in the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. More important than the first canto, more important than the 12th canto, more important than the description of Krishna's appearance, even more important in some ways in the Rasa Panchajaya, the five chapters about the Ras Lila, because it's this chapter that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu adopts the mood in. 
here in Jagannath Puri. This is Srimati Radharani's mood when she meets with Uddhava at the place known as Uddhava Kari near the Nandagaon. And this Brahma Ragit is spoken. And so this chapter indicates Gora Lila. This chapter indicates the meeting in Kurukshetra and it indicates the meeting and the mood in Jagannath Puri between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Jagannath. So uh, it's a little esoteric today. I hope everybody uh, was able to digest some of this. Nice to see Natalia here. And Jesse, if anybody else has any uh, comments or reflections or anything, we can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, uh, we'll be back again next week. And let's see, we're also on Zoom with Gorni Taiprabhu. Gorni Taiprabhu, do you have any reflections you want to share this morning? Thank you. I would like to ask you a question about the uh, of consciousness. Uh -huh. Is that true that uh, when pure devotees who have this uh, deep love for Krishna as uh, the uh, as it says of Krishna, and when they chant Japa, they, they experience the same um, meeting again and again with Krishna? Yes. And sometimes they're just thinking, oh, it's just a dream. Sometimes they would be looking at a picture or something, and, and maybe it's a picture of, uh, of, of Mother Mary and Jesus, but they see Mother Yashoda and Krishna, and they really see Krishna, and maybe Krishna winks at them. <laughs> or something, and they think, oh, I'm, I'm just a mad person. It's described by Thakur Bhakti, they know that in Chaitanam Chintamani, Nami Prasvita Rupa Guna Karma, that from the holy name blossoms Krishna's form, Krishna's qualities, and Krishna's pastimes from that holy name. And we hear in uh, books like Bhakti Ratnakara about the Japa, of Srila Rupa Goswami, that on one occasion Rupa Goswami is chanting Japa and suddenly everything disappeared. We don't hear that Rupa Goswami is chanting one lakh a day. And we hear that, that uh, Haridas Thakur, he's chanting three lakhs. But we don't hear that about Rupa Goswami. Sometimes Rupa Goswami may be chanting one name and that's it for the whole day. He just chants one name because in that one name, then all of a sudden everything disappears. And there's a famous story in Bhakti Ratnakar how Rupa Goswami was once doing his Nam Bhajan and suddenly he went into Samadhi and he saw a wonderful pastime where Srimati Radharani was picking flowers from a tree and there was one branch that had many flowers on it but she couldn't reach them and Krishna understanding her desire climbed into the tree and hid himself and he pushed down on that branch and Radharani saw suddenly this is very nice the tree is very friendly the tree, the branch came down for me. And so then Radharani reached up with one arm and held onto the branch. And with the other hand, she started picking flowers. And suddenly Krishna took his weight off the branch. And so the branch shot up. And then Radharani grabbed, and she suddenly she's hanging like this. And just, <laughs> Rani Taipa, this is your smiling and laughing. Rupa Goswami also started laughing. And at that time, there was a, a, uh, a lame Vaishnava who'd come to see Rupa Goswami. He couldn't walk. And he came, he dragged himself in, and then suddenly Rupa Goswami starts laughing. And that Vaishnava said, that's not nice. He's laughing at me. That's not good. He shouldn't do like that. But he wasn't laughing at him. He was laughing because he saw this wonderful pastime. So such a Vaishnava as Rupa Goswami, they may directly enter into Krishna Lila. Because Abhinata Nama Namino, that, that name is not different from Krishna. Rupa Goswami in Namastika, he says, Purva smat parameva handan karunan tatrapi janimahi. That Krishna and his name are non different, but there's a little difference. The name is more merciful than Krishna. Is that okay, Gwani Taiprabhu? Thank you. Thank you very much for, for giving us your association such an early hour. You're, you're such a great saint, Hare Krishna. Anybody else online with any reflections or anything? You can go ahead and share something now. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and stop. Do you guys have any, any thoughts or reflections you want to share? Let me drag this microphone. Over here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the class. You said many nice things. To make it short, for me, the highlights uh, were like... Um, <clears throat> that um, when Krishna 
when Nanda spoke to him and said, you have to come back, what is with your mom, what is with, the, uh, with your friends? And Krishna said, yeah, you're not my real father. And Nanda said, Nanda Maharaj said, no, Krishna, you really believe that? And Krishna said, no. So Krishna actually considers uh, Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj as his real parents. And especially, I heard we consider Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj as Krishna's real and only parents. Yes. That also very there's, nice. there's proof for that. Acharya's comment that, that the, uh, the word chicheta, I think is what it's used in the Bhagavatam, that the uh, uh, jetta karma sanskara, the, or the sanskara that takes place at birth, when the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, nurse comes and cuts the umbilical cord, the, the, the cord which attaches the mother to the baby, they did that in the home of Nanda Maharaj. Now, unless we sometimes comment that cord was really long and it went all the way across the Jamuna River to <laughs> Kongsa's prison, <laughs> it's proof positive that Krishna is the son of Mother Yashoda, 100%. Who says that? Yeah. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that Baladi Vidyabhushan says that, Rupa Goswami says that, all of our acharyas he described that Krishna's ex. Well, there's a seminar we do sometimes, who's really the mother of Krishna? It's, it's, it's Mother Yashoda. <laughs> but Devaki's also don't think of Devaki's just some low class person or something. Devaki's also an exalted devotee. But Krishna is directly the son of Mother Yashoda. Hi right, Krishna Dayaniti. Nice to see you here this morning. Hey, do you have anything else? Yeah. Speak I have also a question. Okay. So you can also close. Uh, yeah, my question is <clears throat> how we understand that that according to Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna never came back to Rindavan actually. Mm -hmm. But in the Goswami books, Ashta Kalina, so Radha Krishna, they have their their day. They are yeah, they have they are together, they are separation, but Krishna never leaves and so how we understand and also Shiva Goswami, I heard that he wrote even a book where Krishna came back to Rindavan, he just wrote that to somehow, in some way, to pacify us, or is this really true? Sita Nath Prabhu's question is something that some of you may have been listening, you know, we've dealt with extensively. In fact, we gave a seminar recently for the um, SPT, the GBC SPT, whatever the SPT is, I don't remember, about how, uh, uh, how it is that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan which is, we consider the most important subject matter in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Because if Krishna really loves the gopis, Arajya Bhagavan Bhajesa Taniyas Tadama Vrindavanam Ramika Chidupasana Bhajavidu Vagadiya Kalpita. If this is the attitude of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the gopis are the greatest devotees, how can we accept it? It's a lie. It's not true. Krishna left them. He went to Mathura, he went to Dwarka. If he really loved them, he wouldn't have left. And at the same time, it said, Vrindavan a parichiga padikam nagachati. Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So what does that mean? And there's at least four different answers, which would take us a, literally about a week to explain properly. But one answer is that, that Rupa Goswami, excuse me, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, in Sartha Darshani, in, in one purport in the 46th chapter, the 10th canto, he says that... Uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj, when he came back to Vrindavan, Krishna at that time manifested two sets. And he, he stayed in Mathura, but at the same time he manifested another set of covered boys and another father and another chariot, and he returned to Vrindavan with him. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and Jiva Goswami in Lagu Vaishnav Toshini in another purport in the 47th chapter mentioned there's another chamber in Vrindavan. There's two chambers. There's a chamber of union and a chamber of separation. And in that chamber of union, Krishna is always present. And he gives us some examples that when, when the Uddhava first arrived in Vrindavan, the first thing that he saw was he entered into the chamber of union. And he saw that everyone was so happy and the deer and the cows and everybody was so happy and all the gopis are singing and things. And wow, this is amazing. And then he entered into the chamber of separation. And he saw that everyone was crying and bitterly. 
So that's Brindavan. And that chamber of separation, our thesis is, without getting into a long discussion, which it would take to explain it, is given in Lita Madhav by Rupa Goswami in his uh, uh, Navu Brindavan. And Rupa Goswami, have you read Lita Madhav? Lita Madhav describes, Krishna told, excuse me, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Rupa Goswami, write two dramas, don't take Krishna out of Brindavan. Krishna never leaves Brindavan. And then Rupa Goswami, in the fourth act of Lita Madhav, he disobeyed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he said that Krishna went with Akura and went to Mathura, and he left Brindavan. So Rupa Goswami disobeyed him, right? My Guru Maharaj, this is the last chapter in Mathura meets Brindavan. Guru Maharaj speaks about this, how Krishna never leaves Brindavan, and how uh, Rupa Goswami didn't disobey Mahaprabhu. Uh, from aparavichar, from the apparent consideration, it seems that he disobeyed him. But by tattvavichar, in an absolute way, he didn't. But Krishna left Vrindavan and he went to Dwarka in, in Lalita Madhav. But in Dwarka, there's a, there's a garden called Nava Vrindavan. And in that place, in that book, Lalita Madhav, to speak some things which will probably just make you more confused. But in that book, Radharani commits suicide and drowns herself in the Jamuna in separation from Krishna. And then Jamuna Devi takes her to her father, Surya Devi, and Radharani comes before him. She wants to give something. So she gives him uh, that jewel, which came from Shankachuda. And then that jewel became the Shamantaka jewel. And uh, Surya Devi gave Radharani to his devotee, Satrajit. And Radharani became known as Satyabhama. And <laughs> there's a meeting in, in this Never Bindavan garden between Krishna and Radharani. And, and at the end of, of Lita Madhav, it's a very confusing, difficult thing to understand. Krishna asked Radharani, so what would you like? And Radharani says to him, I'd like it that we should be in Vrindavan. We should never leave. And Krishna says to Tastu, so be it. And Radharani says, how is that possible? We're here in Dwarka. And then at that time, Ekanangsa, uh, Yoga Maya, she comes there. And she says, don't doubt. You're in Vrindavan right now. And you never left Vrindavan. But all this has been a dream. So that's, it doesn't mean that there's no such place as Dwarka. It doesn't mean that Krishna doesn't perform Dwarka Leela. But in different yugas, there's different pastimes. It manifests in different ways. And Rupa Goswami describes how in one particular Dibya Yuga, that Dwarka Leela is just a dream. And Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. And there's this place, this group of Vrindavan. And my thesis, without getting into a lot of discussion, you think this is a lot right now, uh, is Jagannath Puri Dham. This is Vipalamba Ketra. This is that chamber in Vrindavan, which is a chamber of separation. It's Vrindavan, but it's not Vrindavan. Where's Radhakun? Where's Shamakun? Where's Govardhan Hill? But those things are here in the uh, uh, Purusha Bodhani Shruti of the Atarva Vedas described. Yeta Bhargavi Jamuna, Govardhan Aratna Samasana, Bhimala Sadosa Chandika Sadosa Gopyaha that this Jagannath Puri Dham is Gupta Vrindavan and the Bhargavi River that goes around it by Chandanpur where uh, Danda Bangalila took place where Nichananda Prabhu broke the Danda Mahaprabhu that Bhargavi River is the Jamuna. Gobardhana Ratna Samas Bhimala Sadosa uh, uh, the uh, uh, Ratna Singhasana that Lord Jagannath sits on that's Gobardhan Hill and Chantak Parva by Tota Gopinath, that's Govardhan Hill. And, but then you may say, that's okay, but we want gopis. Well, Prabhupada said, don't boycott the gopis. He once said that to the BTG editors. Bhimala sadosa chandika, bhimala sadosa chandika sadosa gopyaha. That the 16 gopis of Braj, who are the 16 shaktis of Krishna, the astasakis and the astamanjaris, manifest in Puri as the, 18, as the 16 different... Uh, uh, goddesses headed by goddess Bhimala Devi in the Jagannath Mandir. They're also present here. But this is a place of separation. And therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came here instead of Vrindavan. He didn't stay in Vrindavan, but he came to Puri. Subal Sham Prabhu, nice to see you. Vrinda Sundari, Hare Krishna. We're missing your association on Wednesday. Uh, 
hopefully see you tomorrow night. Uh, so is that okay? Yes. <laughs> it's a big, big topic. Lolita, did you, you have some comment or something? Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really like this series of lectures. It's very, very inspiring. And um, for me, it was also um, very interesting that every verse has unlimited meanings and you can always look superficially and always you can go deeper, deeper and deeper and deeper by repeating the same. And I was thinking that the same thing is with everything in our practice with sadhana and the books and japa and we repeating same and same and same. And we can be external, but we can, by repeating it, we can go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So it was very interesting to see that actually even every single verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, it can have so much inside. And um, that we should do actually our side, not, not for our pleasure, that not to look uh, that, oh, this is nice for me, this is not good, this is not for us to, to to get pleasure, but actually for Guru and Goranga and Radha Krishna. So this was also a very important note. And uh, I also like the point that uh, uh, Krishna was showing himself to Vrijabhasis. And if you would see at least one, this uh, Swapna, one, one, one vision, we would think this is like the goal of life, <laughs> but, but they were, they wanted more and they, their eagerness is, is so high that this for gopis, this Swapna, it doesn't satisfy them and they want always see Krishna. So it's really <laughs> It's just so nice to have devotees here present with us physically. Hare Krishna. Okay, if anybody else has any reflections, we can. Otherwise, right now we'll go ahead and stop. Nice to see you, Gani Thai Prabhu. So uh, I guess we'll see you uh, our tomorrow evening, a few of you. Grantana Shrimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Samabeda Bhakta Binda Kijai, Goprema Nadi Hari Hari Bo, Vancha Kalpa Dudu Bhishcha, Kripa Sindhu Bhiva Cha Pita Nam. Pavanibio Vaishnavibio Namunamaha Nanda Kodi Vaishnav.